Well, here we are, the last month of 2023. Yes! And we're going to end it strong and solid with a lot of blessings. I'm optimistic. I'm always optimistic. I always just like to go into the month going, this is going to be great. There's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of good stuff happening. Mm -hmm. So, December. I'm very excited about this because we kick off the month strong with Mercury moving into Capricorn. Mercury in Capricorn is clearing up our thoughts. It's uh, giving us a lot of successful um, streamline of our thoughts and our plans. It's a wonder, it's a really good time because we're not wasting as much time. We're really like saying, okay, this is what we need to do. Let's go get it done. That's Mercury and Capricorn. Now, hold on to Mercury because we're not done with Mercury yet. I'll be coming back to him in just a minute. On the 4th of December, we have Venus going into Scorpio. Now, Venus rules the opposing sun to Scorpio, Taurus, and Libra, but we're talking about Taurus right now. So Venus rules Taurus. So Venus in Scorpio is not the worst place. Venus does not like being in Virgo. I think we've talked about that. But Venus in Scorpio is not the worst place for Venus, but it's not a comfortable place either. Um, this is a very intense time. You're going to see a lot of intensity here. Um, power struggles, maybe money concerns, or if you had money concerns and they've sort of been hidden, they sort of, they come to the surface during this time. Um, on the 6th, we have Neptune going direct, which is fantastic because this is setting our imaginations free. Oh yeah. So while Neptune's been retrograde, our imaginations have been a little clogged up maybe like there's just been no like nothing to fantasize about maybe our dreams have been a little crippled but now with Neptune going direct we're letting our imaginations go um, we're seeing our dreams are just like way more intense a lot of lot more vivid to like scenes to them and our faith is increasing I love it I love it I'm here for it um, on the 7th um, Hanukkah begins. So if you're celebrating Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. On the 12th, we have a new moon in Sagittarius. I'm going to go into great detail about the new moon in Sagittarius when I do the zodiac reading and card pull for the new moon in Sagittarius. So make sure you turn into, tune into those videos to see like what's shaking out there because the moon is conjunct Mars. So you know what that means when Mars is in the mix. A little bit of aggression. So I'm going to go into a lot of detail about that new moon um, at that time. On the 13th, I told you we weren't done with Mercury yet. Here it is. Mercury goes retrograde. Ah, yeah. Mercury goes retrograde at 2.09 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so Mercury's going retrograde in Capricorn. Hmm. It's going to be great. Mercury is going to go, uh, Mercury is going to be retrograde until January 1st of 2024. So that's just a little bonus. It's just an awesome bonus for all those parties and traveling days and holidays that Mercury is going to be retrograde. Isn't that great? Yeah. Told you there was a couple of little catches. Okay. Um, then on the 21st, we have a really busy day. Um, we have the winter solstice. If you are celebrating the winter solstice with your crew, with your coven, whatever, um, happy solstice. Um, the sun also goes into Capricorn on this day. And again, busy day. Venus is in opposition to Uranus and Mars is quincux to Uranus. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I told you I'm getting over a cold. Um, so with Venus and Uranus being in opposition, this is a really moody and impulsive time for us, like, like feeling wise. Unfortunately, with Mars, Quincux, Uranus, it's also a, an impulsive time, but it's a time of rash behavior. So we really, really need to think things through during this solstice, during this busy day on the 20, uh, on the 21st. So 
let's just think things through. The great thing is, is that Mercury is sextile to Saturn this day. So it is a time of thinking things through. It is a time of planning ahead. Hmm. So there's some help there. There is some help. On the 23rd, we have Mercury retrograding back into Sagittarius. Now, Mercury is not a fan of being in Sagittarius. It's not the most comfortable place for Mercury to be because Mercury rules the opposing sign of Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. But Mercury is um, in opposition to a sign that it rules. It's not the best place, not the worst place for Mercury, but it's not the happiest place for Mercury. So we're still going to see the things that Mercury and, and Sagittarius feels, which is we're not able to articulate, we're not able to get our point across, the communication does not flow very easily. We're going to see that really amplified because Mercury is retrograde in the sign now. Yeah, again, super fun. Mm. On the 24th and the 25th, we have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, respectively. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. On the 26th, I'm so excited about this. Not only is it Boxing Day to our neighbors from the north, so if you live in Canada, happy Boxing Day, and Kwanzaa is also beginning, so if you're celebrating Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa, um, but this is a full moon in Cancer. The moon rules Cancer. This is a fantastic full moon. I love it. I love it. There's a lot of aspects that are going on because the moon is in opposition to Mercury. It's sextile Jupiter. It's square Neptune and it's trine Saturn. So there's a lot of aspects that are actually happening in this full moon in Cancer. Even though the moon does rule Cancer, it should be like the happiest day on earth. But there are some aspects that are influencing it influencing it and I will go into a lot of detail on that card reading when I do the full moon and cancer explanation before the zodiac card reading so make sure you tune into those shows as well um, on the 29th we have Venus moving into Sagittarius so Venus has had a very short trip in Scorpio so now Venus is moving into Sagittarius, which is it's more social, it's very energetic, it's like looking for that pleasurable, that pleasurable, exciting time, and it opens us up to new experiences. It's also a time, it, it can be a little risky. It's, it can be a time where we're not sure if we want to take the risk or not, um, but this can be a little bit risky. So again, think things through, but this is a very social, energetic time. And I'm, it's just awesome because on the 30th, we have Jupiter going direct and Jupiter is our planet, our planet of blessings and luck. And Jupiter goes direct at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So basically at the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, basically at the end of the day, Jupiter goes direct. But it's a fantastic, it, it's like kismet, it's perfect because the next day is New Year's Eve and everybody is celebrating on New Year's Eve, right? Even those of us that like to go to bed early um, <clears throat> are celebrating on the 31st. So... I mean, here we are on the 29th with Venus moving into Sag, which is a social time, and then Jupiter going direct on the 30th, right before New Year's Eve. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yeah, even if Mercury is retrograde, still could be a good time. Um, <clears throat> we end 2023, not only December, but also the whole year, with four planets in Earth, um, Jupiter and Uranus are in uh, Taurus. We have Capricorn and, um, I'm sorry, Capricorn is hosting the Sun and Pluto. Um, we have three planets and North Node and Fire Sign. So we have Mars, Mercury, and Venus in Sagittarius and North Node in Aries. And we have two planets in Water, Saturn and Neptune, both in Pisces. And we do have South Node in Libra, and I've been talking more and more about South Node in the past little while because I've just 
just been like studying about it and just a little bit more obsessed with South Node. <laughs> I don't know why um, <clears throat> in the past few months. So, but we do have South Node in Libra. I did not check the to see where the, all the asteroids were, but right now I think that's the only thing that we have in air at the end of the year. So, I know it's it's been a journey. I will tell you, this has definitely been a journey. I'm so grateful to all of you that have just made made this like a, a great channel. This has been an awesome, awesome year. And thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for all your feedback. I appreciate all the comments. I, thank you. I'm so looking forward to 2024 with you. But before we get to 2024, let's see what your individual numerology is here at the end of 2023. Hello, Life Path 11, and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer, and this is your monthly numerology. I have the lovely and beautiful Jasmine with me today, and I have Mouse, who is not exactly a menace, but I just want to say he was hopping around over here earlier. He knocked all of my stuff down. Like, I have the notes for the life path numbers, like, on either side of my monitor here so that I can sort of run through it. He knocked those down. He disconnected my uh, receiver for my wireless microphone. Um, it was just, just perfect. You know, I didn't know I was recording with no sound uh, for two videos, but, hey, hey, it's special, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's real special. So, we'll see if he shows up. He got a little bit of a scolding, just to be honest with you. All right, Life Path 11. December for you is a three month. Yeah, it's all about communications. And it definitely is something that you should be watching and seeing what Mercury is doing because um, Mercury is the planet of communication and three is all about communication in a big way. The um, mantra of the three is I am creativity and vibrant expression, sharing my authentic voice freely. Very, very important during a three period. Communications of thoughts and emotions, being able to speak your truth, huge, huge, huge. This is definitely a time of expression and self-expression in all its different forms are fantastic. Whether you're doing it in art, in writing, in public speaking, or in music, or if you're decorating your home for festivities, for holidays, if you're giving parties, all of that is definitely self-expression. I think it's fantastic. This is a very artistic, creative, and imaginative time. And it really is great because it brings a lot of cheer in. It does. And we need that cheer because we're experiencing a lot of family ups and downs during a three period. During a three month, during a three year, we're experiencing a lot of family ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. So, um, this is a month all about expression, and so while we are um, speaking our truth and expressing ourselves, neither one of these things should cause, or it does not give you license to cause injury or um, to cause injury to another, especially for personal gain. So we're not trying to hurt someone else's feelings. We're not trying to cause injury to other people. This is a time of being able to speak your truth and express yourself, but we're also not limiting other people. Okay? I know. It sounds a little uh, all over the place. It kind of is. Because as we're expressing ourselves, we have to uh, like um, look at other people and go, you know what? That's okay. They're expressing themselves. And for that 11 energy who wants everything, you know, wants everything to be in balance, wants to embrace each other people anyway, 
you are powerfully creative and this is a creative time. So don't go overboard and forget that other people have the right for self-expression either too as well yeah the lesson of the three is communicating emotions openly and letting go of judgments of the self and others and we have talked about this so many times on here because this is a shadow side of a three but it's a shadow side of a lot of people judging of ourselves is is something that once it starts overflowing out of us and starts we start judging other people it's really really hard to bring that energy back in it's really hard to like bring that back and we don't want it to overflow out into other people because once we start judging other people we realize it's so much easier to judge others than it is to be accountable for our own stuff yeah um so shadow effects of the three is judging of self and others very harshly unable to speak your truth or communicate openly being a little pessimistic okay a lot pessimistic um exaggerating and being gossipy when somebody who has a life path three is not following their path they do get gossipy and they really exaggerate so don't fall into that trap during this period the great thing about an 11, oh my gosh, well, there's so many great things about an 11. The great thing about an 11 is that you're always looking for new ways to uh, communicate with other people. You're always looking for a new way to create a new way of reaching someone else or being able to understand them. This is, again, this is great. This is fantastic. I feel like this is going to be a wonderful time for you because you're already in a place where you want to convert your dreams into reality and that's part of your life path and this is such a creative and artistic and imaginative time for you that I think that this is really gonna like just be right up your alley truly remember the mantra of the 11 is I'm divine inspiration making a difference in the world today yeah you are you are definitely an inspiration you are illumination to people and things that are sort of dark and dismal um and i love that this is a time of clairaudient and clairvoyance for you this is part of your life path but listening to uh, and using your self-expression and being artistic during this this time is going to help you to listen more to your guides listen to that inner guidance of what how you need to proceed and what you need to do next i know because january is going to be a very dynamic time for you yeah the lessons of the 11 is embracing humility altruism and the willingness to convert fantasy into action so we're not going to get stifled we're definitely going to keep working towards our goals um this is <coughs> this is definitely not a time excuse me this is definitely not a time to ignore your spiritual gifts this is a time to um work through being too sensitive uh, having that nervous tension you know those are some of the shadow sides of the 11 um learning to act interact with other people publicly yeah that's so much fun for an 11 um, and problems embracing humility this is a wonderful time for you to do this it really is because you can speak your truth and you can still work through some of your shadow side yay okay 11 let's see what cards have for you today um, I'm pulling from the usual the goddess guidance Oracle cards and the healing Oracle crystal reading cards love these cards they're so awesome all right let's see what we got for you today oh goodness I'm telling you this cold is just like us beating me down it's always great to be sick around a holiday isn't it Ooh, 
Kuan Yin, compassion. Oh, that is great. We'll set that to the side since mouse isn't here and I don't have to clear the, the desk completely to give him space to lay down. One more. Ooh, black tourmaline protection. Oh, that's awesome. I have two little pieces of black tourmaline up here. Okay. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so Quan Yin, Compassion. Um, oh, what a beautiful card. Look, it's sitting in a lotus. Release judgments about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is with ev within everyone. That is absolutely perfect for you. That is absolutely perfect for you this month, 11. So awesome. Okay, let's pull on the black tourmaline. Black Obsidian, Black Tourmaline, Protection. What a fantastic card. Um, black Tourmaline is one of the most powerful protection crystals within the Crystal Kingdom. It draws divine light from the universe and directs it into the darkness. It brings light to the shadows as it illuminates and awakens the wisdom of the void. Oh my gosh, that's what you do. You shed light and illumination on things. It's awesome. As the light meets the darkness, it protects all in its presence. It offers a protective shield around the aura, allowing you to feel safe and grounded, dissolving any negative energies in the field. So it is a great crystal to have around computers and other electromagnetic devices, making for a healthier environment. It's powerful grounding and protective crystal. It dissolves stuck or dormant energies in the body and the auric field. It strengthens and protects the aura and assists in creating appropriate boundaries in your life, which is about speaking your truth. I really love this for you, Life Path 11. This is awesome. This is really awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for your support on my channel this year. This has just really been an amazing year. I do really appreciate you. Don't forget to check out your um, the monthly readings that I do for the, the new moon and the full moon. Um, and of course, some of the other videos that I have coming out. I've got some new stuff coming out for 2024. And I hope you have a wonderful December and a wonderful holiday, whatever it is that you celebrate. And until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye.